So in order to factor numbers and terms, you need to be able to break things down into what their prime factors are. And there's a couple ways of doing that. We have what are called factor trees. This is how I learned it when I was a kid. And then there's also what's called factor steps, which for me as a visual learner, I actually like this kind better now, but I'm gonna show you both because not all learners learn the way I do. Let's start off with the number 100. And the idea is we're gonna just keep factoring this down with branches and branches and branches until we get down to the end of our factor tree, which is when we have only prime factors. Each branch ends when we end up with a one and some other number. So let's start with 100. I'm gonna say 10 times 10, because when I think of 100, that's the first thing I think of. Neither one of these numbers are prime, so I'm going to break them down into the next branch down. Both 10s are 2 times 5 and 2 times 5. That looks pretty good because I'm thinking in my head, the only way I can get 2 is 1 times 2. The only way I can get 5 is 1 times 5. They start getting a little bit messy as they get closer. But there's my prime, 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 prime. That means 100 is equal to 2 times 2 times 5 times 5, or 2 squared times 5 squared. Those both equal the same thing, showing we have two twos and two fives. Let's do 100 with a factor step. The main difference here is that we're kind of doing an upside down multiple, or division. Do you notice this is kind of like the upside down house where we usually do division? But what goes outside of this always has to be a prime number. So when I look at 100, I know it's even. If it's an even number, I always start with 2. So 100 divided by 2 becomes 50. And I'm going to do a step underneath it. Now I've broken this down in half. I can break it down in half again. 50 divided by 2 is 25. Remember, all of the numbers on the outside here have to be prime numbers. 25 divided by 5 gives me 5. And I can still divide that out by 5 again, and that gives me 1. The steps are always done when you have a 1 at the bottom. And then you look at your numbers on the outside here. We have two twos and two fives, which is the exact same thing we got over here. So we can show that 100 is equal to 2 squared times 5 squared. And that's how we could find prime factors. Let's try it again with the number 24. We'll do a tree and we'll do a step. When I think 24, I realize it's an even number, so I'm going to divide by 2. That gives me 12. 12 divided by 4? I can't really do that because I want to put a prime number out here. But if I think 12 and its math facts of 4 and 3, 3 is prime, so I can put it out there. But then I'll put the 4 down below. 4 can be divided by 2, which gives me 2. I'm almost done because I know if I divide 2 by 2, I get 1, and then I'm finished. That gives me these factors here, so 24 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 2's and a 3. You can put the 1 there if you want, or just leave it invisible. What's nice about the factor trees is you don't have to have a prime number to divide by, you're just going to end with them. So I could say 6 times 4. Neither one of those are prime, so I'm going to keep dividing. 3 times 2, and 2 times 2. And it can get to the point where you think this in your head, but I'm just going to show it now. I want to make sure that these are all prime. The only thing I can multiply by is 1 in itself. And these are my primes right here. Same numbers I got over here. I have three twos and a 3. So there's two different ways to find prime factors of a larger number when you're looking to find the greatest common factor.